good morning, everybody. Good morning. It's Friday. Dwight Hughes, good morning, brother. Sheila Whitmore, good morning. Felicia Claiborne, good morning. Rhonda Davis, right, good morning. Susan Thompson, I see you watching. Thank God it's Friday. I know that's right. Stacy Moore, Cheryl Robinson, good morning. Deborah, good morning. Hugh Ivy, Timo, good morning. Bobby O'Neill, Stacy Moore, the McDowell's is on. Hello, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Gene Woods, Sister Regina Julian, good morning. Brother Lamont Briggs, good morning. Rachel Govan, good morning. Brenda Ashford, Victoria loving herself, Jackson. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. See, good morning. Sandra Gabo. Cheryl De Miss Cheryl, I'm gonna say Dubois. It could be Du Bois. If I've been saying it wrong all week, I'm sorry. Uh Miss Kizzy, good morning. Pastor Denise, good morning. I can hear your voice saying that too. Good morning. Yes, good morning. Tanya Neighbors, good morning. Grandma Dorothy, good morning. Liz Denson, I don't think I've seen that name this week. Good morning. Diane Bingham. Slola Page, Brother Noni and Miss Lisa, good morning. Good morning to everyone. Morning, Mother Mars, Mother Esther, Miss Cheryl Harris. Good morning. If I miss you, uh, you know it's just the names moving fast. Good morning. Corey Norflit. I don't think I've seen that name this week. Good morning. Thanks for joining. Good morning, everyone. It is Friday. This week went by very fast. Um, hey, Granddaddy, good morning to you, sir. It's Ann Mosley, good morning. Diana Jackson Pryor, good morning. Bishop Pinckney, I see you over on YouTube, good morning. This week went by so fast. Robin Rogers, you see it, good morning. Patricia Newton Powell. At the Wheeler, Miss Pershawn, I see you. Good morning, Elder Estelle Cocroft. Good morning, Nancy Miller, Miss Joyce Hobson, the Encourager. Thank good morning to you, Stiley Thomas. Good morning, if you see me looking down, I'm trying to look at got a uh, all the the ways that we're online up this morning. Um, just trying to look on there, see if anybody's saying anything. Miss Kenyatta, good morning. Roberto, Do Roberta Donaldson, good morning. D. Burt, BK, good morning. All right, it's seven, let's get started. God, we come to say thank you, Lord. We love you and appreciate you. And in all things, we are grateful. We are thankful uh, for you being with us on today. We pray that you continue to be with us, lead us and guide us, give us wisdom and understanding. In Jesus' name, amen. So welcome to the 10-minute Bible study. Uh, we're looking at 
the great characters of the Bible. We've been going all week um, talking about Isaac. We've been talking about Isaac on this week. I thank you all for joining me all week. We did it, everyone. We got through um, the lesson um, that was laid out by uh, Dr. Alan Stringfellow. Again, this is the book. We're only this. Isaac is only lesson seven. And so this is the book we'll be going through the rest of this year. Um, so certainly I encourage you to get the book. And so you can follow along um, and do some study on your own time. Um, uh, so Isaac was our, our focus for this week. And um, some lessons that we learned from this study go right out of the book. It, it really asks some questions. It, it's what, or it says, what God promises, he always does, even if it takes 25 years, as in the case of the birth of Isaac. And again, that's just don't let go. If God has promised you something, you know God promised you um, something, you hold on to that promise because he will fulfill it. He is not a man that he should lie. And then what God requires us, of us, we should do, knowing that his way and his will is the best for our lives. Um, lean not to your own understanding, uh, but rely on God. Um, acknowledge him and he'll direct your paths. And what he asks you to do, you should do it because he is our God and he does know best. Um, faith is a must for a Christian. Abraham so, had so much faith that he offered his only son. These are lessons we should learn from this study. Abraham had uh, an amazing faith, even though it did seem at the beginning he was, he was questioning God, didn't know that God would come through. But once God came through, once he saw God come through, it built his faith up to the point where he was willing to offer his only son. Uh, but as we read, as Abraham and Isaac were going up, Isaac asked, where's the ram for the sacrifice? And Abraham said, the Lord will provide. So he did know uh, that the Lord will provide. Isaac, Isaac teaches us in the Old Testament what was completed and fulfilled in the New Testament. Again, this was uh, just the kind of comparison between uh, the miraculous birth of Isaac versus in, or in contrast to uh, the miraculous birth of Jesus Christ. So Isaac in the New Testament and some of the things surrounding his birth um, and then Jesus in the New Testament um, and the things surrounding his birth. Uh, trickery and worldly schemes only bring heartache to any family. Um, that is concerning uh, Esau and Jacob and the mother helping uh, Jacob to fool Isaac um, to get the blessing. Uh, none of that was necessary. And in the end, it caused strife in the family. Um, and once the sons went away, um, they were never seen again. It, it just caused strife. And so uh, we don't want to scheme. We don't want to have trickery um, and use worldly uh, things to get uh, accomplished what God has promised us. We rely on God. God. And the book asks some questions. Uh, when was Isaac named? When was Isaac named? This is a time you can go ahead and put in the chat and see if anybody remembers. When was Isaac named? And I'll give a few seconds for that. When was Isaac named? Does anybody remember? At what point was Isaac named? All right, so um, Isaac was named before he was born. There it is. Now they're coming up. I see the, the online is a little bit behind. And you're right, D. Bert, uh, Val Holt, T. Mo, the first to respond that I see online. Uh, he was named before he was born by God. That's right. How old were his parents at birth? How old were I, Abraham and Sarah? Uh, when Isaac was born. Does anybody remember that? How old were Abraham and Sarah when Isaac was born? Just give you a hint. They were old. They were a lot of old. Miss um, Victoria Jackson, first one up I see in Val Hope. Uh, Abraham was 100 and Sarah was 91. That's right, 191. 
Abraham was 100 and Sarah was 91. Uh, what does the name Isaac mean? What does Isaac mean? That name meant something. And what did it mean? Isaac's name given by God before he was even born. Uh, what did it mean? What did his name mean? Kizzy the Certified Chef Mayon, Rachel B. Govan, uh, Yvonne Roberson, the first to come in uh, on here. And it meant laughter. That's right. Laughter or he who laugheth. That's right. And the next question is, in what way is Isaac a picture or foreshadowing of Christ? I think that answer can get a little lengthy. Um, and so I'll just give you that one again. It's just concerning and around the birth um, and all of the things surrounding the birth, the birth being promised, him being named beforehand and it being uh, more of a miraculous birth. That's the way um, in which it's just a foreshadowing of Jesus Christ. Did Abraham see the ultimate seed, Jesus Christ, in his soul? Now, um, that's going to take some study. That's uh, You go to John 8 and 56, and you can see that um, there. Um, it, 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 it hints to Abraham seeing the ultimate seed, Jesus Christ, in his soul. And then it's as Isaac had human weaknesses and faults, and the book asks, can you name three? Um, I'm going to skip that question to be very honest with you. Uh, we all have faults and weaknesses and we don't want to point them out. As our bishop tells us, we don't look down on a man unless we're picking him up and we can't pick Isaac up no more than he is. And so we'll leave that question where it is. You can certainly take some time and consider it, answer it for yourself um, in your own time. Um, next up, they're going to talk about um, Jacob. Before we get to that, I just wanted to add, it's definitely not in the book. This is my own thoughts concerning the study that we've done this week. Isaac and Isaac is a figure that I term a bridge character. We don't really know Isaac for any one kind of miraculous or great thing that he did himself. But we know him more for uh, him being the son of Abraham and Abraham being uh, given the promise and the covenant with God. Um, we know him. We know Isaac for um, the things concerning his birth. But again, nothing that he actually did. And then we know him for his sons, mostly um, Esau and Jacob and all the things surrounding them. Um, so Isaac is more of a bridge character that we don't know anything per se great that he did. But that doesn't mean he's not an important character. And it doesn't mean he's not an important man. Without him, uh, the promise given to Abraham would not be fulfilled. And without him, we wouldn't have uh, Esau and Jacob and all of the things that come after that. We wouldn't have the promise confirmed in Isaac. And so um, although he may have not seemingly done anything great, without him, we wouldn't have... Um, all that we have from Abraham to Jacob. And so I just encourage you that you may feel like maybe you're not a great singer or a great preacher or a great teacher, or maybe you're not doing something that uh, the world or others may consider great, but you may be a bridge for someone else to come from the life they know to knowing Jesus Christ. And that is the most important thing, that you continue to fulfill uh, the promises of God in other people's lives. Other people may see how you walk, how you live, and they may want to get to know this Jesus. And that is more important than any single thing that you can do. And so that's my encouragement to you that uh, don't worry if it's seeming uh, that you may not be up teaching, you may not be singing the greatest songs or what have you. Um, if you live your life according to God, if you live your life according to the word, others will see it and others will want to know the Jesus and the God that you serve. And nothing is greater than that. Our next assignment is going to be Jacob. Uh, you can read Genesis 27 through 35 and then 46 through 49. 
Matthew 22, 29 through 33, John 4, 6 through 3, Acts 7, 6 through 19, and Romans 9, 9 through 13, and then Hebrews 11, 20 through 21. Our next study is going to be on Jacob. You can join us starting on Monday at 7 a.m. We again thank our leaders, Bishop Burt and Pastor Pat, for giving us the platform to learn and to engage. We thank Pastor Denise um, for uh, being the pastor over this area and having the, the thought and the mind to do this. And I am thankful um, to be able to be a part and to serve in the kingdom. I pray that all be well. God, we pray that you uh, uh, continue to bless us. We thank you for giving us this time of study and of together and fellowship. And I just pray a special blessing over anyone who is watching this either live or later, God. And I just pray that you continue to be God in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen.